control it. Captain Marvel, a movie that has started World War III on the internet. I, for one, don't care about internet squabbles. I'll state my opinions on the film as a film. Now this is me. If you want to hate someone for what'll be said in the video, this is the face to hate. Now, in my opinion, Captain Marvel is yet another Marvel movie you will forget about in T-minus two days. Captain Marvel doesn't do much that's actually interesting, and what it does that is interesting, other Marvel movies have done a lot better and with more heart. I say heart because that's one thing that's missing from the movie. Now in this analysis, I'll try to dissect the movie as much as possible. I'll talk about the writing, cinematography, editing, overall theme of the movie. But let's start with the worst part of the movie, it's writing. Captain Marvel's first 10 to 20 minutes are rather solid. I've noticed a few other YouTubers say the same thing, and I think the reason it felt solid is because it was just prolonged action and cool visuals for 10 to 20 minutes. You don't feel attached to any of the characters that are introduced. If you do, that's great, but I really didn't, and I really didn't get to know them at all. Who is this person? I have no idea. Now, I really didn't want to say this. I had a feeling since I saw the first trailer, but Brie Larson is really bad in this movie. It seems as if the writers wrote Captain Marvel as this sarcastic, Captain America, like a fusion between Tony Stark and Steve Rogers, but without flavor and without heart. This is a flight stabilizer. It's completely harmless. I didn't expect that. Grenade! Oh, no, no! Get away! Oh. oh, I'll be out of your hair as soon as I track down the scrolls that are infiltrating your planet. Scrolls? Shapeshifters? Her cockiness would work if it's something that she had to overcome. Say in Thor, Thor is a total dick, much more of a dick than Captain Marvel, but he humbles himself by the end of the film. Captain Marvel does not do that. She actually has no emotional arc. It's just her discovering who she is, but that doesn't mean her emotions really change. She starts the movie stoic and rude, and she ends it stoic and rude. A race of noble warriors. Heroes. Noble warrior heroes. Okay, your turn. Prove you're not a scroll. Samuel Jackson plays Nick Fury, and he's rather alright, but he's in the movie way too much in my opinion, which sucks because he's the best part of the movie. Why I wish he was in the movie less is because the movie feels more like Captain Marvel and Friends rather than Captain Marvel. Carol Danvers needed more time to shine on her own and show that she can do things on her own rather than the film being a buddy cop comedy for the entire second half. Now Ben Mendelsohn plays the villain and he's actually really good, probably being the best part of the movie, which made me realize that Marvel did a total 180 with Captain Marvel and instead made a compelling villain instead of a compelling protagonist. There's also Carol's friend, Maria, played by Lashana Lynch. There's a point in the movie where these two supposed best friends finally meet, and instead of it being this one powerful, emotionally devastating reunion, Maria just stares at Carol, there's no crying, no sentimental words, and then we cut to Maria cracking a joke. This infuriated me, because what could have been the most powerful scene and what the movie has been driving us towards ended up being incredibly weak. Now here's my biggest takeaway from the movie. Captain Marvel is the worst part of Captain Marvel. And why is because you don't really go on an emotional journey with her. The movie is written so you feel like you are, but you're really not. Now here I'm going to talk about heavy spoilers, sorry about that. Skip to the timecode on the screen to skip all the spoilery stuff. Now the movie begins with Carol not knowing about her past, and because of her not knowing anything, we can't latch on to anything emotionally as viewers. The people she could be latching onto at the beginning are her partners. The Star Force is ideal. They have this bond and this banter, even though we only see it for 30 seconds. And when Carol is separated from her friends, we never actually see her longing to return. That could have been something. The story could have been her wanting to search for her past, but also wanting to conform and return to her team, but it never comes to that. At the end, when the truth is revealed, Carol is hurt, but we don't really care, at least I didn't, because she has no bond with her teammates, which is further cemented by the fact that she has to kill them in the third act. In the third act, she has to fight her friends, and she's cracking jokes in typical Marvel fashion. But I don't remember Captain America cracking jokes when he had to fight Iron Man, when Iron Man was trying to kill Bucky. And I don't remember Thor cracking jokes when he had to fight Loki not once, but twice, and Loki's his brother. The final fight is actually supposed to be this fun moment, as in, hey, Carol got her powers and she overcomes her past. Now, let's kill all my friends. It's really weird. 
Another problem is that Captain Marvel never really goes through anything truly devastating. She also doesn't overcome things with intelligence and determination. At the end of Captain Marvel, we get this, in my opinion, fantastic scene of Carol accepting her humanity and overcoming her past, I guess? She takes on the supreme intelligence with raw strength and emotion. It's visually cool, but it isn't very emotionally moving because she just kind of finds out that she's human in the movie and is immediately cool with it. This is the only scene in the movie, in my opinion, in which it feels like Carol actually has to overcome something. The only problem is that she overcomes it by just getting stronger. And that usually only works once in a movie, and after that, viewers start to not buy it. For example, in the beginning of the movie, Carol is handcuffed and has to take down this massive scroll army on her own. She has to remove her handcuffs somehow, and because of said handcuffs, she can't use her powers to shoot people. Guess how she gets the handcuffs off? She gets stronger and shoots harder. At the end of the movie, when Captain Marvel is faced with an overwhelming Kree army, all she has to do is get stronger and shoot harder and blow up all the ships with no effort. Now, this doesn't break the movie, but it does feel weightless, when the scene could have been written in a way in which it actually takes effort for Carol to overcome those obstacles. Now, maybe this sounds kind of picky. Let me give some examples. Iron Man has to use his intelligence to get out of a cave. He also has to figure out how to take Iron Monger out on his own and distract him while Pepper is turning on the generator. Black Panther has to risk his life to be able to kill Killmonger by using the train's electromagnetic waves to be able to stab him through his suit. Thor has his Get Stronger moment in Thor Ragnarok, but in the end, it isn't enough and has to kill Hela by actually starting Ragnarok. Captain America stops Bucky by having to connect with him emotionally. Ant-Man has to shrink between molecules to stop Yellow Jacket. You get the point. Captain Marvel just gets stronger. And that's all she does. Lastly, I love Brie Larson as an actress, but I have no idea what happened with this movie. I do personally feel as if she was miscast, because the problem isn't only the writing, but her delivery. Because when she says something sarcastic, it always sounds like this. Where were you born? Congratulations, Agent Fury. You have finally asked a relevant question. Did I pass? Not yet. First job? Oh boy. You guys don't have any clue, do you? Whoa. Brie Larson delivers all her lines in a deadpan manner. She lacks charisma throughout the movie, and Ben Mendelsohn, the villain of the movie, and Samuel L. Jackson, the secondary character, are both always one-upping Captain Marvel. The worst thing about this movie, personally, is how Nick Fury lost his eye. Guess how? A cat scratches his eye. That's literally it. Look at this scene in Winter Soldier. That's what makes it an army. Not a bunch of guys running around shooting guns. Last time I trusted someone, I lost an eye. But if you want to stay ahead of me, Mr. Secretary, you need to keep both eyes open. It doesn't matter anymore. He was making it all up. He was trying to sound cool. He actually just got scratched by a cat. All right, end of spoiler talk, let's talk about visuals. The visuals are okay, they're passable. There's some amazing VFX of a Kree city, and Captain Marvel's powers look as good as Iron Fists and Marvel Netflix. There's some shots that look absolutely terrible though, like Black Panther bad, but honestly, it doesn't surprise me because Marvel likes to keep tight schedules and VFX companies can't really polish things up that fast. Again, a VFX company does make those terrible CGI moments, but most of the time it's just Marvel with its deadlines. At least that's what I keep hearing. Anyways, the cinematography in the movie is rather good. There are some interesting shots. There's this weird idea that's presented that's very abstract, almost kind of art house. It's ruined by horrid CGI though. It's like a less interesting The Last Jedi scene, this one specifically. There's some really cool camera work in this location specifically, but the editing... Wow. You could tell from the opening fight that it wasn't going to be very good. It's just your average, quick-cut blandness that we've come to expect, and I wanted more out of this film in that department. It's rather depressing. The color grading on Earth is absolutely abysmal as well, with everything looking gray and brown. Pretty much concrete. Do you think I'm too harsh? Look at this fight. <laughs> Now compare it to this. The fight scene from the Wolverine pops a lot more, right? It's because of the color, the saturation, as well as just better camera work. What is this shot? Tell me, please tell me what this shot is. 
Oh, that's right. It's a terrible one. There's a final fight sequence on a spaceship and there's a room that's so dark and everything's moving so quickly and the camera is moving so quickly, you barely know the characters too. There's moments in which you just see epic fighting, but you don't really know who Captain Marvel is fighting. Anyways, Captain Marvel is an okay movie. It sits alongside Thor The Dark World for me. I expected so much more from this movie. The movie isn't even that feminist. I don't know why there's so many haters for this movie in that regard. You should be complaining that the movie is just another product. And that's ultimately what Captain Marvel feels like. Marvel, Disney, is selling you a product, not a character. And the movie feels like a prequel to a bigger movie. And that's because they already are making a bigger movie. Endgame, Captain Marvel 2. And most people say that as an excuse for why a Marvel movie isn't that good, you know? The movie should be a cohesive story with powerful characters, not a run-of-the-mill story with fabricated emotional stakes to make people feel good for two hours and prepare for the next movie. Captain Marvel sits on the shelf with Thor 2, Ant-Man and the Wasp, and the Incredible Hulk. Closing comments. The scene in which Carol gets her powers is incredibly good. I really dug the explosion and the entire scene, honestly. Goose the Cat also does not steal the show. I still wish Phil Coulson was alive. Lastly, the Skrulls were the best part of the movie and were actually the heart of the movie. And that's where I'll leave it. Thanks guys for watching the video. Did you like Captain Marvel? Did you hate Captain Marvel? Did you loathe Captain Marvel? Did you love Captain Marvel? Please let me know. I want to know your opinions. Anyways guys, I do have a Patreon. I do have merch. If you really like this content, it would be great if you supported me that way. And thanks so much for coming to the table. I'll see you all next time.